Hi everyone, welcome to this week's Azure update. It's the 12th of December. As always, we have the chapters, so you can jump to any one of the very few number of updates available this week. And before we get going, I was just in uh, Boise yesterday for a customer visit, and I have to share this. The, this was my room key, and I was only 50% sure that my room would actually be there. Uh, fortunately, it was, but I loved having that particular room number. Anyway, uh, new videos this week. One video, because this took a lot of research and a lot of time, but it's using Logic Apps and workflows you created and the built-in connectors, of which is over 1,400, pretty much any system you can imagine, I can integrate with, with Logic Apps, where I can expose it as an MCP server. And that, of course, then means I can use it from my AI applications, my AI agents. So I walk through how that works, how it integrates with API Center, how it integrates with Microsoft Foundry, and how I can then go and use that within an agent really, really easily. So this is a super powerful capability. If you think of all the different systems, an AI app is useful when it integrates with things, I walk through how to do that. So on to what's new on the compute side. So Azure Batch has extended the time default outbound access, i.e. to the internet, will be available. So it's been extended to March 31st, 2026, instead of the previous September 30th, 2025. Now remember, this is all about that default access to internet things that is going away. Instead, you have to add some explicit outbound connectivity, for example, using NAT gateway, using a network virtual appliance and user-defined routing. There are other methods available, but that default egress to the internet is going away. You have to add something explicit. So make sure you do that now before end of March, 2026. Um, on the networking side, so App Gateway V2 now has a FIPS compliant mode in GA. So remember, App Gateway is all about providing a regional layer seven load balancing capability. It understands HTTPS, it understands HTTP. Um, I think it's also got TCP capabilities as well. And now what I can do is I can enable a FIPS 140-2 compliance mode. Now that's all about the specific Cypher suites you're allowed to use as part of TLS. And so now I can turn on those policies. It will only use the Cypher suites that are FIPS compatible, enabling you to get that compliance configuration. And on the storage side, so Azure Files Premium LRS, so locally redundant storage, now has a zonal option in GA. So with LRS, I get three copies of my data within a certain cluster. But what I can now do is I can specify which AZ I want that LRS deployment too. Maybe I would need a closer alignment to a certain set of compute. Maybe I want to reduce latency to that. Maybe I'm doing my own kind of resiliency and replication. So I want instances in AZ1, a separate instance in AZ2, et cetera, et cetera. Now, obviously, if I just wanted to be zonally redundant, then I would use ZRS. ZRS takes those three copies and splits them over the three AZs. So this is where I want to be more specific and only want the three copies in one specific AZ. On the database side, so Azure Databricks dashboards now have the ability to integrate with Microsoft Teams. So think about, hey, I've got some insight now in the dashboard. It can use Teams to communicate to someone. So that's going to reduce the need for sending emails, maybe hooking into some other tool, which ultimately will accelerate overall solutions, accelerate that collaboration. Miscellaneous. So Microsoft's Vibe Voice is available. So this is a text-to-speech model. And what's really cool about this is there's a 300 millisecond latency before it starts speaking. I it's super fast. So why that's important is imagine you're generating text, like word at a time, and I want it to start being read out. Where does that apply? A lot think about a large language model or a small language model. It outputs a token at a time, well, within 300 milliseconds, so less than half a second, it will actually start talking to that. It can synthesize speech up to 90 minutes long with up to four speakers. It understands the context, so it's an expressive voice. So, oh, exclamation mark, oh, it'll be more expressive about that voice. And again, I can use different voices as part of that overall usage. So that is now available to go and try out. 
Azure Sphere OS 25.12 is GA. There's no customer facing changes. It's just a whole bunch of under the hood updates. But that means because there's a lot of under the hood changes, you'd want to do some fairly significant uh, testing on that. And then GPT 5.2 from OpenAI is now available. Of course, Microsoft has the super close partnership. And what you see here is a lot better results when you think about long documents on really hard problems, on multi-step projects, on very large code bases. And it is designed for productivity purposes, not just those chat interactions. Now, there are three versions. There is instant for fast, everyday writing. There's think thinking for very complex reasoning for long form tasks. And then there's pro for maximum accuracy. Um, now, Microsoft is rolling out GPT-5.2 across all of its tools. So you think M365 Copilot, so you'll get better insights across your work. GitHub Copilot, better long context coding. And then obviously Microsoft Foundry, Copilot Studio, when you want to write your own apps, agents, just get more uh, power for your solutions. And that was it. As always, I hope this is useful. Until next video, take care.